this video lecture, we're going to discuss the phenomenon of reverse causality and the ways that the threat of reverse causality could cause problems for trying to assess a causal relationship in a study that we're doing. So going back to these four hurdles to assess causality, right now we're talking about the second hurdle, which is that we rule out the possibility that we have reverse causality. In other words, that Y causes X. So if you have reverse causality, that means that you flipped around which one is the cause and the effect. Um, and so this could be a problem because you're not actually showing the sort of causal relationship that you think you are. So to be able to rule out reverse causality, what do we have to do? How can we rule out this? Well, first, we need to ask ourselves, can we show that these changes in X happen before the changes in Y? In other words, can we show that there's a temporal sequencing where your cause precedes your effect, right? If you can't show that, then it raises questions about which came first, chicken or the egg. So to talk through this, let's go through an example here. So imagine that you are interested in the question about um, why people join rebel groups and you have a particular hypothesis. You think that maybe people who have been victims of state violence are more likely to join rebel groups. And in fact, that experience of victimization is something that is highly motivating and causes people to turn to militarized solutions themselves. All right, so this is your hypothesis. But you might imagine that there is a problem of reverse causality. So you might say, wait, which came first? Were people victimized by the state first or did they join a rebel group first? Um, because you could imagine a situation where by having joined a rebel group, well, that means that you are going to be subject to state violence. If you are participating, say, in Hamas, um, your headquarters might be bombed. You know, you might face brutal uh, tactics by by the military here. And so you'd want you wouldn't want to simply ask people if you did some sort of survey, um, have you been victimized by the state? and are you in a rebel group, you'd want to do a little bit more probing to say if they've had experiences of state violence, when did that happen? Um, and to be able to say, if you're a part of a rebel group, at what age did you join this rebel group? And so that's what you'd want to show, that people had experienced the state violence first, and then later on joined the rebel group.